Do we have any other questions out here in the audience? Yes, back here. Um, what are some of the tried and true marketing strategies that independent filmmakers can kind of give a little bit of an independent twist to? And then we're talking about being on the internet. The new thing about Facebook now supposedly is that if you post something on Facebook, they kind of got it in a small print that they kind of own to a certain extent what you put on there. Just, this is just Facebook now. I know the internet is a big, big market, a big tool. But um, what are the, the things that Hollywood does in the market and how can you put an independent twist on it? Well, can I? I'll give you a brief answer to that. But let's start with the independent, what they've done effectively, if something is banned or opposed by the Catholic Church, that's pretty good for your marketing campaign. <laughs> uh, if something is banned by anybody, that's usually okay. I mean, usually, usually you can get somewhere with that. But, you know, what does Hollywood use? Stars, familiarity, sex, violence, uh, I don't know what... Uh, you know, what, what I'm, I'm not sure, are you looking for, for tried and effective techniques of marketing that independents can put a twist on to advance their own interests? Yeah, if, if, if you look at Hollywood, they can do all those things because of their own budget. And of course, once you, start, once you build everything into a star, then they can do interviews and then they can do commercials and whatever. Okay, come to, come to the closing, come to the closing night film at this festival called Soul Surfer. Has anybody heard of this film? Yeah. Okay. The acid gonzo surfers of 30 years ago are now Christians. Surfing is very Christian. Who knew? I guess there's not that much surfing on Lake Erie. Um, it is Lake Erie, right? Right. Okay, sorry. You can see where I'm from. But anyway, imagine what the, let me, let me tell you what they have. They have. There is surfing on Lake Erie. Oh, there is. Okay, great. <laughs> I plead guilty. <laughs> right. They should show that, they should couple that with the Israeli surfing documentary. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, soul surfer, Christian uh, suffering. A woman, a girl, 16 years old, is surfing, gets her arm bitten off by a shark. What is God's plan? God's plan is to have them all in bikinis, on surfboards, <laughs> overcoming hardship in the name of a higher power <laughs> with a clothing contract. <laughs> Tell me that won't work. It's, it's, it's everything middle America ever wanted. Not that I know anything about middle America. It's playing, come see it tonight. I'm sure it's sold out uh, because it already has worked pretty well. You know, and it's, and it's being distributed by a guy who used to be an independent distributor. And she's doing the talk show circuit. Yeah, of course. Yes. Right. I think any effective marketing campaign is about engagement with your audience and whatever that is that engages them, mm -hmm. but not just limited engagement like I like you or, you know, but why would I talk to you more? Why would I come back to see more of her work? Why would I? That's And, and so take that as the starting point and work your way backwards, whatever that means, whether they hate you or love you or afraid of you or watching you or worried about, you know, and it's really about engagement. I mean, and that's kind of what, you know, anyone is on Facebook is trying to do. Anybody on, you know, they're engaging and trying to build and trying to add to that and engage more and more people to come back and stay there. Yeah, and, and the important thing is that it's really, as we said, it's really crucial to get an audience to see your films. But the fact that there isn't an audience yet shouldn't deter people from making those films. You know, make your film. If you believe in it, make your film. And then, you know, no one said it was going to be easy, but you've got in, in Nigeria, for example, you've got the Nollywood phenomenon where films are being made for really minimal, minimal amounts of money. And you've got some independent guys saying, oh, I, could do, I couldn't do that. They were only giving me $700,000. And a Nigerian guy would say, well, I could make 100 films for that. You know, give me the money. I'll, I'll, I'll build an industry. And in Peshawar, in Pakistan, near the Afghan border, there, it's got its own Nollywood phenomenon. Films being dozens and dozens of films being made there. I mean, everything from action films to Pakistani pornography. I mean, you name it. Uh, and and you know, this is this this is a, this is a good thing. And and you know, it's up to you to find your audience, but it shouldn't deter you from making the film. That's a 
that's a good point for the film students watching this. Like, how many times have I met a film student if I say to them, oh, here's 50,000, here's 100,000, I can't make a movie for this. I can't. It's like, it's not possible. As that, opposed that, to how but. could I figure this out? You know, it's a, it's a real problem with our privilege and how we yeah. approached yeah. films in this country. It's also, it's also like students who say, well, I'm going to make a 20 minute film. How do you know it's going to be 20 minutes? Yeah. <laughs> right. What, what do you mean you, you want it? Right. Yeah. Right. I, no comment. Yeah. No more comment. If I can just make some very pragmatic comments, because I think that uh, you have an advantage when you do documentaries because they always have a topic that, and you will be able to find marketing partners for most topics. Not always, but, but uh, it's possible very often. But you can actually also, I've seen it done uh, quite a bit with, with fiction films mm -hmm. as well, that you, you can do tie-in campaigns. I mean, if there's a film about babies, you have a variety of companies who will do tie-in campaigns with you. And, and it really is about being creative about this and not thinking that you need a huge budget up front. I mean, we never have, I've never ever had a huge marketing budget for a documentary, and we're doing pretty good. We are, we are co-producing a, a film right now that's just finished, which is about five <coughs> Swedish singers who meet to do a Dolly Parton <coughs> tribute concert. And uh, and it's a it's a very nice film, and, and we do believe that it has a lot of potential, especially with the female audience. And what we're doing is we're doing um, pre-screenings where we're inviting all the hairdressers mm. because they will be talking. We we right. we think we don't know if it will work yet, but that's the idea. So we are inviting all the hairdressers in Denmark to come <laughs> see this film for free, uh, and we throw in a little uh, products that we can get sponsored here and there. So it'll be a nice day for them and, and we think that they will be talking about this film. We have absolutely zero money for a campaign, but this we can do. And I think that you can do things. A lot of these things can be done. Just look at the Blair Witch Project or what was the other one that was out recently, what's the name of it? Paranormal. Yeah. I mean, it's just about... Well, look at, I mean, look at, look, you can also say, look at The Girl with the Dragon Tattoo. Domestic thriller. The, the, the American distributors turned up their noses at this film. The film was bought for distribution by Music Box, specialized company that distributes French films, where they thought maybe there's something here. And of course, there was. And the experts, you know, the, the smart money was wrong on that. Um, what she just said about the, that collaboration, that is huge. Just finding those, even for fiction films now, you find those organizations who love science fiction. You find those people that are, are into the topic that you're dealing with, and you partner with them. Um, we, our film, because it's a conservative place, right? There's no sex. There's no violence. In this movie about the genocide, there's no violence, right? So I looked at my team. I said, look at this. I made a movie with no sex and violence. <laughs> I don't ever do that. But, but, you know, and it's an independent film. You think about how many independent films actually have cursing, sex, and violence in some way, shape, or form. And like, we, we already in a different place. So I started thinking about the faith markets. You know, it's like, you know, there are people out there who would love to see films like this that, do, that don't have this but actually deals with an interesting topic. So we started reaching out to churches, we started reaching out to interfaith groups because in our film, Muslims and Christians work together in Rwanda to save lives. So how much is that needed in this country, in this world right now? How many Muslims are there around the world? So we start in, engaging Muslim organizations to come out to our screenings and so forth. And we invited the heads of all the churches in, at Sundance to come to our first screening and they can invite their congregation later and that's gonna be our, part of our process. Then on the personal level with audiences, we say these people in our film have lost their entire families and they're being asked to forget as a part of this country healing and moving forward. What in our personal lives have we not forgiven? How many wrongs have we, you know, somebody cut me off in traffic or something that we're still holding on to? Somebody cheated on you in college and you're still <coughs> harboring feelings against that, you know, 20 years later. You know, you still haven't grown and moved on from that. What, what is that? So we have a, so in most, most film festivals you have postcards that people give out to promote their films. Well, in the back of our postcard, um, we, we had these stamped at, at Sundance. We said, 
please take a minute and let someone know that you love or forgive them. And you send it, to, you see our family, you can send it to somebody because in that moment there's some impulse inside you is like all this stuff I'm holding on to. Now they're engaged at some, to, at some level. You know, and so, you know, there are amazingly beautiful ways. The hairdresser way is one, but it's, that's, that's how, part of how it's going to happen. On the, other, on the other end of that, um, our wacky film, the protagonist is actually blind. And he's really blind. So we have eliminated, like, oh, I'm, I'm blind, I want to go see that film. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> Blind people do go to movies. I made a few. A yeah, and about I mean, this people. one particularly, the sound is obviously, you know, we had to learn what, what will make this film desirable for a blind audience, you know. So there's all kinds of. That's beautiful. Yeah. You should always try to connect with special interest groups or, you know, um, and, and tier it. I mean, because we continually just keep finding, like, whoa, I work with the Peace Corps. There's a guy here from the Peace Corps who wants the Peace Corps to see this film. It's like, okay, great. You know, now we've got a new special interest group. So, you know, if you keep tearing that, you know, and if you don't, if you come up with your idea and you're sitting there in front of the computer and can't find a special interest group to start reaching out to, then you need to make another film and forget about that one. <laughs> <laughs> but, because uh, that's, you know, that's where your audience is going to start. Well, somebody's going to, listen, this, this is America. It is a group that will support my bottle of water <laughs> if I do. If you, if you find, there's people out there who will support a bottle of water. I'm saying, you know, they're, they, you, you have to, they, the, you have to can't, you can't be lazy about this. You gotta find them, you gotta even build them. Tell them why they should care about Create this. Them. And all of a sudden, oh my God, this is the most important thing on the planet. I mean, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just hearing you all talk makes me think that the marketing aspect and how you can make a film cheaply needs to be part of the film curriculum for these students. Because I, I, I don't know, I mean, you teach People who teach, do you address those aspects of filmmaking, or is it mostly how do you do it and you know the creativity part, not what do you do once you have your product, then what? Is this part of the curriculum, and should it be? This is something that I'm, I'm starting to address, for sure. Okay. For sure. Me too. But it's, you know, ever-changing, every week. It's a new right. model, you know. Mm -hmm. people, a lot of people are still going off of a model from the 80s and 90s. Sure. I go into a film festival, I get a distributor, my life is over, I can relax. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> so that, that's the kind of the model that a lot of people are going into film school and into acting and all these things. I'm gonna go and someone's gonna do it for me once I right. get into this film festival. I mean, there's also the whole thing, because my work is really, really I mean, I do live cinema, I do performing, um, and, it becomes like a fusion. It, is it video art? Is it film? Is it is it live? Is it you know what is it anymore? You know, so we have to be open to that and not a lot of uh, students that I see come in with this Hollywood vision. You know, they all want to you know work at um, you know some animation company or something. I saw you so talking there, but it's like because I you know I know there's students here and I can't take an opportunity not to say, but that that is. One of the biggest issues working abroad and in the States is that everybody in the United States wants to be a director. Oh, of course. And when I work with crews in other countries, a lot of people actually appreciate their position of being a sound person or being camera or being cinematographer. Mm -hmm. Not everybody wants to produce and direct. It's a very, I, I love working outside of the U.S. because there's a, I mean, particularly in France, there's the auteur is respected and things like that. but. You, there's very few people who are not thinking about Hollywood. Mm -hmm. And usually it's not about being a director. It's just the power or the fame or the glamour right. or whatever. They want, to, no, they want to be something rather than do something. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Big difference. Yeah. 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 Everybody who acts to be an actor, they want to be an actor. I said, you want to act or you want to be famous? <laughs> right. Because yeah. they want to be famous. They don't want to be an actor. Right. Right. Yeah. 